about three new dinosaurs. And I'm going to tell you some of my theories. And the theories that I have, I keep in this journal. I have some other cool stuff too, like bird feathers, sometimes even plants. But most of the time, I have graphs or facts that I love and I want to keep in this journal. That's the stuff that I may want to share on my show that I put in this journal. The first dinosaur I'm going to talk about today is called Therizinosaurus. Therizinosaurus means soft lizard. It is 20 to 23 feet long. It weighed 3 to 4 tons and lived in the late Cretaceous period. I want to tell you my theory, but the first thing that I have to tell you is the number one rule of evolution. The number one rule of evolution is that all mighty creatures have smaller, less overwhelming ancestors lurking somewhere in their family tree. I think that since Therizinosaurus may have had feathers, it was bird-like, but also it was shaped like a prosauropod. But that might not be true because the prosauropods lived from the Triassic to the early Jurassic. This may be a new genre or a type of dinosaur called a bird-like prosauropod in my mind. The next thing that I want to talk about that I've taken a note is that Therizinosaurus had long intestines for eating plants. People used to not know what Therizinosaurus ate, but that helped. And another thing that I like uh, to think about is why it had claws. The claws were dull, not sharp as you would think. I think that may have used its claws to pull the branch that it was eating the leaves from to neck reachable height. Then it would use its long neck and its beak to strip leaves off of that branch. Therizinosaurus is a very amazing dinosaur. The thing that I thought might be pretty funny about the Therizinosaurus is that it was the Edward Scissor hands of the late Cretaceous time period. The next dinosaur in my dinosaur notebook is called Homolocephaly. Homolocephaly is a bonehead. Its name means even head because its bone head was even. Homocephaly was five feet long, it weighed a hundred pounds, and lived in the late Cretaceous period. My theory about Homocephaly is that it may have used the crown horns, the horns in the back of his head, as like a defense for uh, itself. It may have got the back horns on his head and slashed him up and killed other dinosaurs like that. But that's just my theory. It may not be true. Homocephaly had a lot of enemies. Maybe like Adosaurus or Holsampes. Even Chinkankosaurus. These were like theropod dinosaurs. Its habitat is Asia. People used to think that boneheads headbutted. But Mark Goodwin said that that would break their skulls. So he said that they may have flank butted. That means that they headbutted each other's hip area. And that wouldn't hurt as much. That's what he thought about the homocephaly and the pachycephalosaurids. The final dinosaur that I'm going to talk about today is a different kind of dinosaur and it has a different family. They're called ornithopods. And the dinosaur from the ornithopod family that I'm going to talk about is called Othnelia. Othnelia was named in honor of Charles Othniel Marsh, but it doesn't really have a meaning. It was four feet long, it weighed 50 pounds, and lived in the late Jurassic time period. I've got a lot of notes. It may have ate plants, 
ate shrubs, possibly ate bugs. Its defense was running. It had large eyes, a stiff tail, and a duke claw, which I consider a toe because I say it's four toes, as I said in the first video. Because it practically is a toe, even though it doesn't do the job the toe does. The toe pushes the foot forward and holds it to the ground. Its behavior is that it lived in herds. And the way that it would survive in herds is that it may have had a leader that would control it. My theory is that Othniolia may have used its five-fingered hands to gather plant material to take back to the nest, while the guard of the whole pack or herd was still at the nests. This is a picture of the tooth. The tooth is like a chisel-shaped tooth. It's more pointed but it's also a little bit flat. So we think it may have ate plants or bugs. I have a new dinosaur forum on my website and I'm going to be asking a question and you're going to be putting your own scientific answer on the forum. And the question for today is do you think Velociraptor needed feathers? Go to my forum at RileyTalk.com and put your answer. Be a paleontologist. I hope you learn a lot about dinosaurs today. Bye!